All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2004 Jaguar XJ8. Up front is a 4.2 liter V8 and down below is a six speed automatic transmission. This video is sponsored by carmarshall.com. If you'd like to support the channel, click the link down in the description below. Carmarshall.com advertises for over 100,000 vehicles across the US. But let's get back to that 4.2 liter V8. Well. It's sort of in the same family as the 3.9 liter V8 from Ford. If you guys remember, I actually reviewed a 2004 Ford Thunderbird not too long ago, and that had the 3.9 liter V8 from Ford. Now, Jaguar was actually owned by Ford at the time of the making of this car, so there's actually a lot of Ford parts that go into making this, which is really nice because Ford parts are cheap. At least here in America, Ford parts are real cheap. For instance, the owner Roy, which thank you Roy for letting me take out your Jaguar, he told me that the Crown Vic suffered from the same issue that this car sometimes suffer from or suffers from, which is the coil packs going out on the engine. You get a misfire, a coil pack has gone out for one of the cylinders. It's a $30 part for this car. One of the most common issues is fixed by $30. And so Roy has had this for couple of weeks now and he said reliability has been absolutely great he has not had a single issue he's put over 10,000 miles on it he took it on a cross-country road trip and he said it's done amazingly so we got a little bit of road here we'll put it into sport mode which we'll talk about a little bit later on um, but it's a 4.2 liter v8 let's open it up let's see what it can do It's not the most blood curdling, toe curling, punch to the chest V8. They did make a supercharged version which made about 100 more horsepower than this, so take that as you will. But it definitely delivers solid, solid power, solid, reliable power. Online, you can find that it's rated at like 290 horsepower, but a lot of people say that Jaguar underrated it so then it would fit the tax exemptions that there were in Britain at the time. Whatever the case may be, however many horsepower it puts out, I'm not exactly sure, it's enough. It's definitely enough. It's sporty and I like that a lot. And we'll talk about sport mode in a little bit when we get to the center console. The engine does actually get okay gas mileage. Like I said, Roy took this on like a 2000 mile journey. He got about 26 miles to the gallon throughout his travels and that was taking this on tail of the dragon all the way down to north carolina over to missouri and back up here to chicago so 26 miles to the gallon for a big old v8 not bad at all now like i said paired to it is a six-speed automatic transmission it is a zf transmission so zf is a manufacturer of transmissions and they do great great work a lot of same year or similar year bmws have this transmission the hellcat the 700 and seven horsepower Hellcat has a ZF transmission. They're very solid transmissions, especially for 2004. This is a little bit before dual clutches really started to become a thing. And so as an early 2000s transmission, it's pretty good. It'll hesitate sometimes when you're really revving it out. It'll pause and uh, blah, 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 blah. But it's a solid transmission. It, it's not uncomfortable. And I really like that. Last but not least, of course, the XJ8 is rear wheel drive. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but let's get to the interior. So in front of me, I have three main gauge pods. On the left is my tachometer. In the center is my speedometer. And then on the right, I have fuel and coolant temperature. Then down in the center on the speedometer, I do have a little information screen. It'll give me my trip, the odometer. This car only has 57,000 miles on it, which is pretty nice. And that's why this car is so rust free and everything. It's a Florida car that had 46,000 miles on it, I believe, when Roy bought it. So this is a very clean car. It was one owner, elderly couple. Which, speaking of which, getting away from the interior for a second, they seem to have added their own yellow line on top of the doors. If anyone knows what this is, please leave a comment. Roy and I cannot figure it out why they would do it. It seems to be painted on and I'm not sure the reasoning. It, it doesn't look like an accent. I, I don't know what it is. Please leave a comment if you know why an elderly couple would paint a yellow line on the tops of the doors. 
But getting back to the interior, as I digress. Now, if you wanna change that center screen, you can find that on the turn signal stock. There is a little plunger button at the end. That's how you switch all of that. The steering wheel is very nice. I do have phone options, voice phone options, volume up and down, and then my cruise control on the right. Another nice feature that was offered in higher trim levels is you could get this chassis in 2004 with radar cruise control. So that is a pretty big dig as well. But I like the overall look of the steering wheel. I have the Jaguar logo in the middle. It looks nice. The steering wheel, I'm pretty sure this is fake wood. The rest of the interior is real wood. But this looks fake. It doesn't really match the rest of the interior. I'm not quite sure what it is. But next to me, I do have a big button center. I have my miles slash kilometers so I can switch my units within the gauges and everything. I have front fog lights as well as rear fog lights. So I was not aware of this until I drove this car. Apparently it's a big thing in the UK and in Britain and stuff like that is having rear fog lights. So it kind of looks like your brake lights are on, but it's just so when it is really foggy, your tail lights are brighter. So if someone's gonna follow you through the fog or you know they could see you better, which is really, really nice. But I've never seen a button for the rear fog lights. Then I have my fuel door, trunk release, things like that, blah, blah, blah. On the actual door itself, I have my power windows, power mirrors, child locks, and then up top, I have three different memory seat settings, which is really nice. Again, for 2004, three different memory seats, that's a big deal. Now getting to the center, I do have an analog clock. I absolutely love that. I, I think it's totally great. And the reason for this is, first of all, for Christmas, I got a Fitbit watch. I got a smart watch. I don't need an analog clock in my life. The time is either right here or it's on my phone. I don't need analog clocks really ever again. And I know that's the Gen Z in me talking, but I still like seeing analog clocks in cars because that means I'm in something a little bit special. You don't see a base model Toyota Corolla with an analog clock. And so anytime I see an analog clock in a car, especially one as nice as this, it's just a trigger in my head of, oh, this isn't a base model. Oh, this isn't something that is just going to be used, abused, and thrown away. This vehicle is more important than a Coke can. So that's why I like analog clocks, and I think this looks very nice. Then getting down to the center console, honestly, if it weren't for the center console, I would think that this was a little bit newer of a car than 2004. I mean, just genuinely speaking, but the screens here do kind of date it just a little bit. But up at the top, I have some interesting buttons. Heated seats for both the driver and the passenger, as well as the rear seats are heated, but we'll get there in a little bit. Then I have valet mode, so that will lock the glove box as well as set a speed limit. Then I have the hazard, lock and unlock, and then heated seats for the passenger. Coming down to below those buttons, I have my climate controls. Now this is where I start to kind of wonder what the engineers at Ford slash Jaguar were thinking. There's a knob for the fan control with a little power button next to it. First of all, I've never seen a power button for a fan control. Usually you just turn it down to zero, but it is much larger than the radio volume knob. So first instinct for me to turn down the radio is grab the biggest knob and twist probably a joke there, but it's not. The biggest knob is for the fan control, not the radio. It's, it just baffles my mind. I mean, you rarely use the fan control because this has auto climate controls. So why? I mean, like you would only use that if you want to manually adjust your heat, which how often would you do that with automatic climate controls anyway? It seems rather pointless, but the rest of the heating and air conditioning is pretty solid. It looks a little dated because of the screen, but besides that, it works well. Then we do have the radio with the smaller knob. The radio's nice. The buttons are nice and large. If your eyesight isn't great, this is not an issue because the buttons are so large. <laughs> almost comedically large, but I do have a number pad if my phone is hooked up. You know, this is sort of that era, the end of the era of the car phone, where it was kind of an option. BMW is famous for doing this, that if you look in the trunk lid, it sometimes it'll say that it was equipped with the optioned in-car phone. 
which is kind of neat. But I have all my buttons and they work as they should. One of the most interesting buttons on the radio is the auto memory. So if you have your presets, you know, like everyone has in their car, they set their favorite stations, 103.5, 107.5, B96, whatever you want to set it as, you could set it. However, in this car, it'll also do auto memory. So you don't have to set anything. It'll just remember your most visited or most listened to stations. That's really nice. Then coming down to the center, we do have a little cubby hole, which opens nice and slowly. Very, very nice to reveal a 12 volt outlet and an ashtray. Then we come to the shifter. Now there's a bunch of interesting things with the shifter. It's a very weird shifter. And so let's get into it. First and foremost, let's talk about sport mode. So this car does have sport mode. And unlike most other cars from the 2000s, and even some today, this isn't just a, oh, it shifts at a different point, it gives you a little bit sportier feeling. This car does have air ride suspension. You might hear it whizzing every once in a while in the background of the video. So not only does it have auto leveling, when you park it, it lowers down just a little bit. When you're going faster, it lowers down just a little bit. And that's really cool. But when you put it into sport mode, it stiffens up the suspension. So actually when you're going around corners, you don't get as much body roll. It feels more like a sports car than a giant luxury sedan. Now you can't really get away from the weight of this thing completely. And even with stiffer steering, it's not going to handle the back roads quite like a Mazda Miata. But it definitely helps out and this was a sportier car for its time you know this was compared up to other bmws and audis and mercedes and it was pretty sporty compared to those cars i mean something so big and luxurious it's never going to feel like a mazda miata but it feels a little bit closer with those stiffened sport suspension options and steering then we have the traction control off button you can toggle that on and off if you'd like but there's no way to turn off stability control so you can do hot boy burnouts, but you cannot do hot boy donuts. Car really didn't like that. Then we come to the actual shifter itself, which looks very, very weird. So I have park, reverse, neutral, and drive. That's all fine and dandy, sure. Very normal there. But I can go over to the right, and I can actually put it into second, third, fourth, fifth. And technically drive is overdrive, so I guess you could put it into sixth manually if you want to call it that but it's really weird i can actually ratchet it myself i can put it into second third fourth. i've never seen a shifter like this where you shift it over and then you have like a whole different column of shifting it's very interesting this is sort of their manual mode i guess this is before plus and minuses but very very odd then I do have a power parking brake, very interesting for 2004. And then I have my center console. Now the seats are very plush. They're very comfortable. Like I said, they are heated. They are memory. I mean, they're everything you want out of a seat. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2004 Jaguar XJ8. And it looks like the seat's kind of crushing me a little bit. It's because the car is off and the seat moves all the way back so you can get out easier. So normally I would have a lot more leg room and knee room. It just kind of looks like I'm being crushed, um, which I am, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I do have heated seats down here. I have two 12 volt outlets, one with a cigarette lighter, one with a little charger plug on it, which is sort of interesting. I haven't seen that before, but I could have gotten cooled seats back here, which is interesting. There's a button that should be for that, but of course this car doesn't have that option. So center console, I do just have like a little cubby hole in here and then I can open up this one and you got cup holders, another little cubby hole, pretty basic stuff. The seats back here are really comfortable. Each person gets their own ashtray, which I find to be pretty funny, but overall it's a nice car to ride in. You know, heated rear seats in 2004, I mean, come on, that's something you don't really hear of too much. And so that's really the, the amount of luxury you get back here, which is really, really nice. I do have a sunroof. Last thing about the interior, it is pretty nice and it is power. So that's awesome. Now we got to talk about the looks. I don't think this is a particularly striking car. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look great though. I, 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 I'm not a huge fan of Jaguars of the 2000s. I think most luxury cars from the 2000s were a little too blobby for my personal taste, but there's just something about driving a car 
with a hood ornament. I've been staring at this Jaguar coming off the hood for the last 25 minutes, and I absolutely love that. It definitely makes you feel like you're driving something special. And this is sort of the end of the era of big proper hood ornaments. Now, like the Rolls Royces have them, but they hide away. This is the loud and proud, you might get it stolen hood ornament. And I like that a lot. But overall, I think the color is kind of muted. But then again, I wouldn't buy a Jaguar with unmuted colors. I would not buy an orange or yellow or something other like that Jaguar. I just wouldn't. So it's very muted. It's very classy. This whole car is classy. And that's really my final thoughts on this car. I think it's just really, really classy. It's surprisingly classy. I didn't think it would be as nice. They're a lot nicer and a lot sportier than I thought. It really does blow me away in a couple different ways. First of all, with the air ride suspension, it really does change the way the car feels. It just does. And second of all, all of the features and all of the possible features. This is nowhere near the top trim level of the XJ chassis, but hearing Roy talk about it, you could get it with radar cruise control, with rear heated and cooled seats. That's why there are dead switches in this car because those are for the cooled seats. This car doesn't have that, but it was offered with that. You could get rear climate controls in the center console. You could get rear little tables where you could set down your drinks for the back like you would find in a private jet or something like that. It's really astonishing all of the features that could have been specced out with this car. And so while this is very nice, the ceiling is so much higher. And to me, that, that is astonishing and that is really, really interesting. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, huge thank you to Roy for letting me take out his Jaguar XJ8. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. I, I, I